In one of my previous YouTube videos, I was asked in the comment section, what should I study in order to become a pilot? And this was asked by an individual called Saeed Hussain. So thank you so much, Saeed, for leaving the comment, asking the question, because now I can answer it to you guys. And if you have any other questions, please feel free to jump into the comment section and ask them away, because then I'll continue to make videos to hopefully answer your questions and give you guys a better insight as to what it might look like if you want to become a pilot and how you can take the steps in order to get there. So first and foremost, if you are thinking about what subjects should I study, first thing you need to consider is what subjects do you enjoy? Because the actuality of it is ultimately you're pursuing a career that is going to be something that you enjoy. I hope anyway, you're not just going to be pursuing becoming a pilot, putting all the investment in place and taking all of those sacrifices and making all of those big decisions unless you really, really wanted to become a pilot. So the caveat to all of this is that I want you to really think what subjects do I enjoy it at the moment? Because what you'll realize is a massive element of becoming a pilot is the methodology of studying. Now, if you enjoy what you study, then you'll be more inclined to study more of it. So what that means is you'll build methods around studying that material for that particular subject that you enjoy. You'll build methods as to what the best practices are, you'll be able to talk about it more freely. And when you talk about a subject that you're passionate about and a subject that you're interested in, you'll learn it quicker. So what I really want you to understand at this stage is what subjects do I enjoy? What subjects would I love to just talk about? Because those are the subjects that are actually going to teach you some valuable skills in terms of strategy and approach to studying. Now, I know some of you guys are watching this at school and you're from a education background at the moment. And what we learned throughout the entirety of our lives is the methodology of learning something through the school education system, which is absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with that system. However, what you'll find is when you find a particular subject that you're very, very passionate about, then what you'll end up adopting is a different way of studying that particular material. It will be more practical. It will be more related to you and your life situation. For example, when I was studying for my practical flying exams in the actual tests and everything that I was doing, I was often trying to find myself applying where a situation would require this information, if you see what I mean. So being able to apply the knowledge that you're learning to a real life situation that's going to happen in your life at some point, because you know that this is a subject that you're passionate in and you're going to pursue and you're going to continue to learn on and build upon, then eventually the knowledge and the information that you're going to be receiving at this moment in time is going to impact you for the next couple of years or in the foreseeable future, which means you're going to be feeling more inclined to retain that information. Now, We've got that element out of the way. So I want you to make a bit of a list as to what your passions are and what subjects you really enjoy, even if they're not aviation related, because what I'm gonna do is try and explain what aviation related subjects might look like. And I'm gonna start from the very, very bottom, which means if you're in secondary school in the UK, you'd be starting at a GCSE level. Now, first and foremost, there are three fundamental GCSEs that are very, very important to becoming a pilot. And for most flight schools and cadet programs, you're gonna need these three GCSEs, and that is maths, English, and physics. So ultimately, if you can say to yourself, I'm going to study maths, physics, and English as a default, then the supplementary areas, so any other subjects, can be whatever you choose them to be. Now, yeah, I'd be inclined to say a more sciencey subject might be useful. However, I didn't do completely sciencey subjects. I did stuff like drama, I did stuff like uh, art. I enjoyed, I did stuff that I enjoyed and it didn't hinder my journey towards becoming a pilot because now I am a commercial pilot and studying those subjects did not stop me from pursuing this goal. So ultimately, when you think about what should I do extra from those three core fundamentals of maths, physics, and English at GCSE level? Do subjects that you enjoy. Do subjects that you think are going to build you a broader picture of yourself and are gonna be th things that you enjoy studying, things that are going to build you a strategy and build you a technique to studying because if you're studying something that you really enjoy, then you're gonna retain the information more and you're gonna build a stronger muscle in that head of yours, which is the brain. So what you're gonna do is 
By retaining information, you're automatically building stronger neurological connections between all of these bits of information. And your brain is gonna start learning more and more how to build these strains of information to a point where it will also help you in those maths, physics, and English subjects. So if I was to give you an example, you did maths, physics, and English, and then you did art and drama. Now, you're learning things in art and drama that have no application to maths, physics, and English, right? So how does that apply? Well, in drama, you're learning something that is completely different. So what that means is your brain is making connections to things that are completely unrelated to your everyday life. So your brain is strengthening the ability to learn new information. And that is why when you're learning something new, you can often find there is a really big learning curve at the beginning. You can learn things very, very quickly uh, if you start learning something new. And actually, what you'll find as well is if you're learning something new, then the other areas start improving as well because your brain is building a resilience to learn this new information, but it's also using that resilience and that ability and strengthening those neurological pathways to also give you an ability to learn in other areas. So you are developing all across the board when you're learning something new, which is fantastic. And if you're learning something that you're passionate about, if I was to give you an example, if you guys have ever listened to a song or a particular movie that you really, really enjoy and it, it strikes emotion in you and it makes you feel a certain type of way, then what you'll find is you'll actually retain the information from that song or from that movie way more easily than if you were listening to something that you didn't really like. So I, for example, can remember loads of songs back in when I was in school and stuff that I really enjoyed, even to this day, because I know the lyrics to those songs because I enjoyed listening to them and I had a state of mind that actually enjoyed what I was learning, if you see what I mean. So if you go into your lessons, into your subjects, everything that you're doing with a positive state of mind, you're actually gonna retain more information than you realize. So I know it's hard to do that. At school, I hated my lessons and I hated doing all of these things. However, if you can go into each of your lessons thinking, wow, I'm gonna learn something new today in a positive mind state, you'll actually find that you'll learn a lot more than you realize. I remember at school, there were guys that were excelling, that were top, top students. And if you look at those top, top students, they actually enjoy going to the lessons. And if you look at the bottom, bottom students, they don't enjoy going to the lessons. And even in some areas, like the average students don't enjoy going to the lessons, which is fine. I know that there's a variation in people's learning curves and people, how people think about things. But if you can go into a lesson and you actually say to yourself, I'm gonna enjoy this lesson because I'm gonna learn something new, then what you'll find is you will actually learn something new and you will actually learn more than you realize. So go into each of your lessons, trying to adopt a positive mental state because actually you'll find that it will benefit you more than you realize in terms of learning a new subject. However, the fundamentals, maths, English and physics at GCSE level are very, very core fundamental for if you wanted to become a pilot. Now, of course, we move up a level. So now we're going to the A-level slash college area. And what I would really highly recommend, again, maths, physics, and English, as we mentioned in the GCSE level, they are also gonna be applicable at A-levels. You don't necessarily have to do A-levels. I'm working with clients at the moment who have actually dropped out of their A-levels to just pursue becoming a pilot. But if you just want some insight as to what I would recommend, I would say maths, physics, and English are a solid starting point and are a solid foundation for any pilot. So advancing on that foundation is also a good idea as well if you were to ask me my opinion on it. Because actually what I studied was maths, physics and English. And then I also did physical education as well on top of that. So I did something that was extra that I enjoyed. Now again, I would really highly recommend maths and physics as an A-level subject that you study because ultimately you are going to be applying some of those uh, logics in your ATPL theories. However, Maybe the extra subject from maths and physics could be something that you just generally enjoy because there's nothing wrong with doing something that you enjoy. Again, if you can continue to learn something new and you can learn something that you're passionate about, then you're gonna, it's going to also help the other parts of your academia as well. So trying to think in terms of what do I enjoy 
is the best course of action because ultimately you might do maths and physics and you hate maths and physics. I hated physics personally. So I lost a lot of motivation when it came to my A-levels because I actually got towards the end of it thinking, I'm just going to focus on maths and English at this point. And I wish I hadn't. If I had just chosen subjects that I really was really passionate about across the board, then I would have pursued and carried on at a consistent level for, uh, for all of those subjects. However, I chose a subject that I wasn't necessarily that passionate about, but I knew I had to do it, which was physics. And I actually performed worse in physics than my other subjects because I started to neglect it because I just simply did not enjoy learning the, so the content of the subject, which I would highly recommend not doing. I would highly recommend trying to focus on subjects that you do enjoy because it will be to your detriment if you choose to neglect those subjects because you're just not as passionate about them as other subjects. So try and choose subjects that you're very, very passionate about. However, maths, physics and English are always a safe bet. Now at the A-level stage, there's also geography and computer science, which I think would be quite applicable to becoming a pilot. Those are particular subjects that require logical reasoning and require certain processes and competencies that a pilot would adopt too. So I think those are particularly good subjects to study as well. And any science subject is also very, very good because you have a hypothesis and you're going to experiment on that hypothesis. And that requires analyzing data, it requires using statistical charts. So those things are all good because those are things that we're gonna do as pilots as well. And I think that could be very, very helpful towards the ATPLs and all of those kind of long-term things that you're gonna do when you do become a pilot. Now, I've covered GCSE level, I've covered A level. Now I wanna cover if you're thinking of going into a university degree. Now my standpoint is a little bit different than most where I would say if you do wanna become a pilot and it's your only passion, you don't necessarily have to get a degree. I didn't get a degree, um, so of course I'm gonna be biased on that front. However, if you are someone that really wants to get a degree and your parents are pushing you to get a degree and all of these things, which is completely understandable from my end, I'm a Pakistani. My parents, when I, when I told them I'm not going to go to uni, I'm just gonna focus on flying, um, you can imagine they had a bit of a heart attack and they said all sorts of Urdu swear words to me. <laughs> but I decided I was gonna pursue the flying career. However, if you are going to go through the university route, that's absolutely fine. There are certain subjects that might help you more than others with regards to the ATPL element. Now those subjects include things like physics and maths if you are thinking of becoming a pilot after uni. Uh, aeronautical engineering is a kind of no brainer one as well. Computer science, as I mentioned with the A-level side of things, that's potentially a relatively strong starting point as well. Mechanical engineering is a very, very strong starting point as well with the engineering backing uh, to help you understand how systems work, how aircraft work. Those kind of things are super valuable at a degree level as well. Again, you don't need a degree, but if you wanted one, then those are subjects that I would probably be inclined to say those are good subjects that will help you with your ATPLs and with the flying element. Now, to retract from all of this, because what I've just explained is a lot of academic subjects to talk about, but the reality of becoming a pilot is that there is so much more to it than the academic side of things. I, I know that you guys have probably seen a bunch of my videos where I just talk about the pilot competencies and the extracurricular activities that are worth doing in order to build your acumen as a pilot. Because actually, when it comes to becoming a pilot, there are so many intangible qualities that you need to ensure that you excel in this field. Things like communication, things like decision making, problem solving, teamwork. And those things will not be taught to you through a book. Those are things that you have to learn through real world experience. And so how do you expose yourself to real world experience? You do things outside of school. Now yes, yeah, school's gonna give you that academic foundation, which is fantastic. So yeah, do these subjects at school. They will help you build that academic foundation. But when you finish school, when that bell rings at school, you should not just be going home and doing nothing and just sitting and watching movies and stuff like that. If you are really serious about becoming a pilot, then you should be going out, going to a football club, going to a cricket club, going and doing things that are gonna build those pilot competencies in your spare time. Because actually, those things that you do outside of school, you'll find that they are going to be the little bricks that are gonna to add to your journey of becoming a pilot. And those are gonna be the things that fortify you as a commercial pilot. Those are gonna be the things that help you develop those communication skills, help you develop those leadership and teamwork and decision-making skills. Because if you've never been exposed 
to an environment where you've had to be in a team or you've never been exposed in an environment where you've had to make a quick decision, then how are you going to react if something was to happen in the real world? Ultimately, doing things that are going to build your personality, build you as an individual, as a leader, those are things that are going to really, really help you. Now, I'm a Muslim. And what we have is the example of our prophets. And if you're not Muslim, this, this could still apply. So what our prophets, peace be upon them all, did was once in their life, all of them were shepherds. And what that means is at one point in their life, they learned to control a herd of sheep. And what that means for me personally, as someone that's in a position where we are at the front of an aircraft of a very, very expensive piece of technology and we are in charge of hundreds of lives behind us, what well, that makes me think that these really foundational figures in my personal life, what I look at them and I think is that everybody throughout life has to go through a moment which might not be educational, might not be uh, academic, but a moment where they've had to demonstrate a leadership position. So having that exposure to being a leader at some point in your life, extracurricularly, will be really, really valuable in the long run. Because understanding how people work, understanding how a team is built, how a system maneuvers around a particular objective and a particular goal, like herding sheep from one uh, her grazing area, if that's what you can call it, to another grazing area. Herding those sheep from one point to another point requires a lot of decision-making, leadership, teamwork, communication. It requires all of these skills that you will not learn from a textbook. You will only learn it from life experience and from work experience, from things that you've done in your life. And so I think it's so, so important that you look and you explore any opportunity that you can to advance upon those skills. I was speaking with a client at the moment and what I've asked him to do is literally anywhere in his school, in his extracurricular activities, in his mosque, in his local community, wherever he is, I want him to find any volunteer opportunity he can and yeah, it's going to be annoying because you're not getting paid to do it. But where the value comes from, the value that you're going to get out of doing that volunteering is in developing your skills. That's where your currency lies. That's where you're going to make your money, figuratively speaking. Because you're going to be building on a foundational set of skills that are going to enhance your development to another level to allow you to then one day be in a position where you are going to be earning. And you're going to be earning for all of those things you did in the past, for those volunteering opportunities that you had taken part in, that you weren't getting paid to do, but now you're getting paid. Because you've demonstrated to yourself and to the recruiters that were sat in front of you and everybody else along your journey that you are capable to be in the position that you're in because you've adopted and you built upon those skills all the way back then when you weren't getting paid to do it but you were just simply doing it to become a better human being and a better person and to advance upon those skills. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's given you some clarity if you are thinking about what subject should I choose and it's given you some clarity that it's not just about the academics, it's also about the extracurricular things you do. I hope you sign up to a football club or a cricket club if you're not already part of any kind of social environment. So definitely do that. Uh, but if you've enjoyed this video, then it's been inspired by a comment. So feel free to leave any questions that you have in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer them through videos or through the comment section itself. If you do enjoy the content that I'm making, please feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel. That's the simple little favor that I ask. I'll continue to improve the quality of this content throughout the entirety of this channel. Um, and all I ask is that in that little favor in return, if you wouldn't mind. Now, thank you very, very much for listening and I'll hopefully see you guys very, very soon. Thank you.